Hello everyone. I hope all of you are fine. This is fifth video for the series of frequently asked questions in GRE. These question types and concepts are often tested, so don't miss any single video of this series. And if you find these videos helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any single video of the series. So this video involves a tricky question which is about work rate. Just pause the video and try to solve this at your own. I assume that all of you saw this by now. But before getting into this question, let's discuss a bit about work rate to better understand the concept behind this. So let's let's start with some key points. First thing is that always convert time to rate. In most of the cases, time taken by machine or person to complete a job is provided. And we need to convert time to rate as we know that rate is always inverse of time. So consider a scenario that a person take 2 hours to complete a job that's mean he is completing half of the job in each hour now this is possible when we are having a complete job in that scenario whatever the time is the rate is just reciprocal of that time now the next thing is that this scenario will not hold true if we are not provided with the entire job for example that a person take 2 hours to complete half of the job his rate in that scenario will not be reciprocal of the time but in that scenario we need to use the formula which we will discuss a bit further the next thing is that rates are additive let's consider a scenario that multiple machines are working simultaneously at their respective constant rates to complete a job so their combined rate at which they are working simultaneously will be equal to the sum of their respective individual rates for example there are n machines working simultaneously so the combined rate will be the rate of uh, a machine rate of b machine rate of c machine up to the rate of n machine the sum of all these rates for example if uh, two machines are working simultaneously and their rates are 1 over 2 and 1 over 4 units per hour so their combined rate will just the sum of these two 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 which is equal to 3 by 4 units per hour. The third key point is that, which is about the formula, that rate into time is equal to work done. In most of the cases, one unknown is required in this formula. But remember, most of the time, it is loves to play with the units. So pay special attention to the units. As we discussed earlier, this is a very simple scenario in which all of the machines are working throughout the end. But there could be a scenario, for example, three machines are working simultaneously at the respective constant rates. After one hour, one machine breaks down and two machines are working together. And after another one hour, another machine breaks down and only one machine uh, is left for the work. So in that scenario, after each hour, you need to again use this formula. Usually there are three ways to solve any work rate question. To understand those, let's imagine a scenario that machine A can complete the work in 3 hours, machine B can complete the same work in 4 hours. So if the question is that, how many hours would it take both machines working simultaneously at the respective constant rates to complete the work? This is a pretty much common type of question about the work rate, which you might see in your exam again and again, that this is about two machines and there could be a question about three machines. These two type of questions are very common. So let's see first method, which is a conventional method. That as total work done by both of the machines are same, the work is constant here. So let us assume the total work done is one unit. So in this conventional method, we are assuming the total work done as one unit. So based on that, machine A in three hours can complete one unit of work. So hence machine A can complete one over third unit of work in one hour. So its rate will be 1 over 3 units per hour. Machine B in 4 hours can complete 1 unit of work. So machine B can complete 1 over 4th unit of work per hour. As we know that both machines will work simultaneously, so the combined rate will be just the sum of their respective individual constant rates, which is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, and that is equal to 7 by 12 unit per hour. And total time will be just the reciprocal of this rate which is 12 by 7 hour as we discussed earlier 
that rate is always inverse of time as we are considering one complete job. Or you can simply use the formula that rate into time is equal to work done. So 7 over 12 into time is equal to 1 and time is equal to 12 by 7 hours. So this is first method in which we are assuming total work done as 1 and we are proceeding further. See the second method that involves the formula. But before getting into formula, let's see how actually we get that formula. Again, if the total work done by both machines are same, the work is constant here. Let us assume the total work done as one unit, as we discussed in the first method. Based on that, consider that machine A in A hours can complete one unit of work. So rate for that machine will be one over A unit per hour. And machine B in B hours can complete one unit of work. So the rate for machine B is one over B units per hour. And as we know that both will work simultaneously, their respective uh, constant rate sum will be equal to the combined rate and that is equal to 1 over A plus 1 over B which is AB over A plus B over AB unit per hour. As we are considering whole job done, so that means the time will be just reciprocal of this rate which is AB over A plus B. Or we can use the formula that rate into time is equal to work done, so time will be equal to AB over A plus B hours. So this is a formula when two machines uh, are working simultaneously at the respective constant rates and time taken will be equal to AB over A plus B where A is time taken by first machine to complete the job and B is time taken by second machine to complete the same job. And just like in our question, first machine is taking three hours to complete the job and second machine is taking four hours to complete the job. So the time required as they are working simultaneously to complete the job which be equal to 3 into 4 over 3 plus 4 which is 12 by 7 hours. Although I am not a big fan of using the formula, but in some scenario using this formula may be helpful. For example, if you are given a scenario that two machines are working simultaneously and the rate of machine A is thrice to the rate of machine B and when they are working simultaneously the time taken is for example 12 hours. So in that scenario, you need to consider rates in term of constants. And in such scenario, it is good idea to use this formula. And that in very quick way. And uh, right till now, we are considering two machines working simultaneously. But if we are considering three machines working simultaneously, so the formula will be ABC over AB plus BC plus AC in which A is time taken by first machine to complete the job, B is time taken by second machine to complete the job and C is time taken by third machine to complete the job. It's up to you if you can remember this formula or you can uh, simply use the first method and the LCM method we'll discuss after this. The reason why I showed the formula for two machines working simultaneously and three machines working simultaneously because these two question types are very much common. So it's up to you, you can use the formula or you can use the first method. But the best method which I highly recommend is by using the LCM approach. Earlier we are assuming total work done as one unit, but now we are assuming total work done as the LCM of the respective uh, time taken to complete the job as the machine A take three hours and machine B take four hours. So LCM will be three, LCM for three and four will be equal to 12 and we assume that total work done is equal to 12 units. So based on that, machine A in 3 hours can complete 12 unit of work and 12 unit assume work. And so rate will be 4 units per hour. And machine B can complete 12 unit of work in 4 hours. So that means its rate will be 3 units per hour. As both machines work simultaneously, their combined rate will be just the sum of their respective constant individual rates, that is 4 and 3. So the combined weight will be 7 units per hour. And by using the formula, rate in time is equal to work done, 7 to time is equal to 12, and time is equal to 12 by 7 hours. The reason why I highly recommend this method, because of the fact that we are taking the LCM of their time taken, as we need to divide this value by the time taken, and we will get an integer value. But in the first method, we are assuming total work is one unit. So in that scenario, we are getting the fraction values for the ratios. And when we are getting more fraction values, 
there is high probability of getting that question wrong. Now let's jump to the question which we left earlier. So we have three pumps X, Y and Z operating at their respective constant rates. Pump X and Y operating simultaneously can fill a tank in 3 over 2 hours. Pump Y and Z operating simultaneously can fill the same tank in 4 over 3 hours. And pump X and Z operating simultaneously can fill the same tank in 12 over 7 hours. So if all of these pumps work simultaneously, how much hours does it, does it take to fill the tank completely? So now let's see the first approach and last approach. You can use the second approach because there are three pumps uh, working simultaneously. You can use that formula. But let's discuss the first approach first. That is a conventional approach. So let's assume a total work done which is filling the tank as one unit. So based on that, pump X and pump Y in 3 over 2 hours can complete one unit of work. So the rate will be 2 over 3 units per hour. Pump Y and Z in 4 over 3 hours can complete one unit of work. So their rate will be 3 over 4 units per hour. And pump Z and X in 12 over 7 hours can complete one unit of work. So the respective rate will be 7 over 12 units per hour. As all of the pumps work simultaneously, the combined rate will be the sum of the respective individual constant rates. So 2 over 3 is a combined rate when pump X and pump Y are working simultaneously. 3 over 4 is combined rate when pump Y and pump Z are working simultaneously. And 7 over 12 is combined rate when pump Z and pump X are working simultaneously. So if you sum these, the result is 2 units per hour. And there is, there is a common mistake in this that in this method, they assume the total uh, combined rate when all of the pumps are working simultaneously at two, as 2 units per hour. But there is a problem in this. As you see in the left side, all of the rates are twice. So that this is 2 into rate of x plus rate of y plus rate of z is equal to 2 units per hour. Just divide 2 on both sides so that the combined rate is 1 unit per hour, not 2 units per hour. As we are considering the total work done as one unit, so the time taken will be just a reciprocal of this and that is equal to one hours. Or you can simply use the formula rate into time is equal to work done. So time is equal to one hours. Let's see the quick method that is the LCM method. So let us assume the total work done as 12 units, which is the LCM of numerators. And based on that, Pump X and pump Y in 3 over 2 hours can complete the zoom work done which is 12 units of work. And that's why pump X and pump Y can complete 8 units of work in 1 hour. So it rate is 8 units per hour. Pump Y and pump Z in 4 over 3 hours can complete 12 units of work. That's mean their rate will be 9 units per hour. And pump Z and pump X in 12 over 7 hours can complete 12 units of work. So the rate will be 7 units per hour. As all of these are working simultaneously, the combined rate will be just the sum of the respective individual constant rate and that is 8, 9, 7. Just add these and that is equal to 27 units per hour. As on the left side, all of the values are twice 2 into rate of x plus rate of y plus rate of z is equal to 27 units per hour. So the sum of their uh, individual rates will be equal to 12 units per hour. As we assume total work done as 12 units, which is LCM, now if we use the formula, the time taken will be equal to 1 hours. So isn't this a quick method? And we have negated all of the possibility of the fractions in this. So there is high probability of getting this question right instead in the first method in which we have higher number of fractions. So I hope that all of you find this video helpful and if you have any doubt, please let me know in the comments.